Considering I failed the first midterm and barely passed the second one, I'm really surprised that I somehow got slightly above average in this course. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was ELEC 201. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking ELEC 201 during the 2023 slash 2024 school year with Professor Ali Reza Noja in semester one. There were sections of ELEC 201 in each semester this year taught by different professors, but the course structure and content were almost exactly the same. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. Alright, so what is ELEC 201 all about? In this course, you will get an introduction to circuit analysis, specifically the analysis of linear time invariant circuits. You'll learn how to solve different types of circuits using a variety of methods, how components like op amps, diodes, and transistors work, and how to perform small signal analysis on some circuits. If you're like me and you don't remember a single thing about circuits from Physics 158, and you're getting super worried about a course all about circuits, well, fret not because A, the course starts off at square one when it comes to assuming your circuit knowledge, and B, I'll leave a link in the description below to one ECE professor's YouTube channel who has very helpful videos to help you get caught up to speed on the basics of circuit analysis. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 201 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week you will have four hours of lectures to attend, where the professor will explain the main course concepts through a mixture of theory, discussion, and some examples. Attendance is technically not mandatory for these lectures, but there will occasionally be some in-class quizzes done near the end of class. For these quizzes, the professor will show a multiple choice question on the screen, and you will submit your answer through a Canvas quiz. For our section, the notes for each lecture were posted after each lecture. Each week, you will also have a two-hour lab session for ELEC 201, where you'll be constructing circuits using a breadboard, measuring values, and recording your observations with a partner. You'll be given these lab documents that are being shown on screen right now, and your task will be to build the circuit shown and complete all of the follow-up activities and questions. Each lab usually consists of building two to three circuits, and two randomly selected circuits from those circuits will need to be checked by a TA in order for you to receive half of the credit for your lab. There are five labs in total, and each lab is worth two marks. One mark for showing the TA that you built the circuits, and another mark for completing the lab with your partner. You will have two weeks to work on each lab, but if you manage to finish the lab in the first week, you are able to submit it early and not come to the lab session the following week. Every two weeks, you will also have a two hour long tutorial session during the week, which can either be used for a tutorial lecture or for a midterm exam. Now, these tutorial sessions are a little bit different from what you might be used to in a tutorial session in first year because the professor themselves lead the tutorials and your whole class is there. It's not like smaller sectioned off tutorials. In these tutorials, the professor will walk through a couple of examples to help reinforce the concepts that were taught in the lectures. I also mentioned that these are when your midterm exams will be held, and we'll get into that in a bit when we talk about the exams. In terms of homework, you will have weekly webwork assignments to complete every week. These webwork assignments generally consist of five to 10 questions that are designed to help you practice the concepts that were taught during the lectures. For me, these assignments generally took between three to seven hours to complete each week, depending on how difficult the questions were. Webwork assignments are usually released at the end of the week on Friday or Saturday and are due the following week. In terms of required materials for this course, you will need a laptop to do your webwork assignments and your exams on. Additionally, for our section, we were only allowed a physical calculator for the exams. 
I've heard that some other sections of ELEC 201 had an open internet policy for their exams or were allowed to use a different calculator, but I'm just speaking to what my experiences were. If you are only allowed to use a physical calculator, make sure you have access to one that can solve a six by six system of equations, as some questions may involve systems of equations that you'll need to solve in order to find an answer. For context, I have the Texas Instruments TI-84 Plus calculator and it worked fine for this course. For ELEC 201 and a couple of other courses in second year, you will also need to purchase the second year ELEC tools and parts kit from the ECE store for $190, which they are definitely profiting off of considering how cheap some of the parts are in that kit. Actually, I think I have it right here. So it's gonna come in a cardboard box and you'll be using this kit for your labs to build your circuits and to measure different quantities. And it is a necessary purchase at the beginning of second year. Just a quick side note, these kits do not come with batteries. So you'll need to get your own nine volt battery and three double A batteries in order to do some of the labs. I'll leave a link in the description below to the full list of contents in the tools and parts kit if you'd like to purchase some of it yourself. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 201. In the first half of the course, you'll learn how to solve basic circuits using various methods. You'll be introduced to basic circuit components and their element relationships, Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws, and Ohm's law. Once that foundation has been built, you'll then move on to solving time-dependent circuits, how to simplify linear circuits using Thevenin and Norton equivalents, and how to use mesh and nodal analysis to make solving circuits a lot easier. In the second half of the course, you'll explore some common non-linear electronics components, such as diodes, op amps, bipolar junction transistors, or BJTs, and, okay, I'm gonna try to get this in one take, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, or MOSFETs. Ooh, I actually got that. For each of these components, you'll learn about their current voltage relationships, their properties, and how they affect other elements in a circuit. And once you've covered all of these, the last concept that will be discussed is small signal analysis, which is basically used to approximate the behavior of circuits containing these nonlinear devices with linear equations to make things easier for ourselves. And that's pretty much everything that you're gonna learn in ELEC 201. In terms of the grading scheme for ELEC 201, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Starting with your web work assignments, these are weighted at 10% of your overall grade. Your labs are worth another 10% and your in-class quizzes are worth 5%. In terms of exams, you will have two midterm exams worth 15 and 20% respectively, and a final exam worth 40%. For ELEC 201, these exams are done through web work, which might be a little bit weird for some of you to hear. How these exams work is that you'll be given an exam booklet with the circuit diagrams and the exam questions, in which you will show all of your work in. Web work will give you specific values to use to calculate certain answers, and then you will enter those answers into their respective answer boxes on web work. Final note about the exams on web work, you will have unlimited attempts for each of the questions within the allotted time, and a 1% answer tolerance is already built in. So there's nothing stopping you from having over 200 attempts trying to spam numbers and that definitely didn't stop some of my classmates in my year. For these web work exams, there are multiple parts to each question that serve as part marks. Our first midterm had four questions worth 15 points in total. Our second midterm had five questions worth 20 points in total. And our final exam had seven questions worth 40 points in total. Pro tip, at the beginning of the exam, spam zeros in all of the boxes. And if there's a time dependent circuit in any of the questions, you're bound to get some of the marks in that question. And I probably would have passed the first midterm had I done that. So just remember that for your exams. Last note about the exams, we were allowed one letter-sized, double-sided, handwritten formula sheet for each of our exams. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 201. But just keep in mind that these tips are coming from someone who didn't really do the best in this course, and I barely scraped an above average grade. I feel like ELEC 201 is a love it or hate it course depending on how easy or difficult you find solving circuits. 
For me personally, I fell into the latter category as I never had a strong foundation or intuition of circuits before taking this class. And I never really understood the concepts as easily as many of my classmates. And it really didn't help that most of our lectures were highly theoretical and the exams were much more difficult compared to our homework and in-class examples. The only saving grace for this course for me was that when we finally learned nodal and mesh analysis halfway through the course, it just made solving everything so much easier. So I guess my first tip for those of you who are like me is to learn nodal and mesh analysis on your own early in the course so that you can have a slight advantage for everything else. For many of you taking this course, it will probably be your first time taking an exam on web work, which may be a bit disorientating at first. I was definitely nervous walking into the first midterm because there was a very big chance that I could get 0% on this exam, even with all of the right logic and thought process. And well, after taking eight exams this year on web work, I can confidently say that this feeling has not left me at all. However, one benefit of having web work exams is that you know right away whether or not your answer is right or wrong, which means if it's wrong, you do have the chance to think to yourself, okay, where the heck did I go wrong in this question during the exam, which is a luxury that traditional exams don't have. The third thing that I have to know about ELEC 201 is that the exam averages tend to decrease as the term progresses. I remember this distinctly because my exam averages somehow went up while everyone else's was going down. If I remember correctly, our first midterm average was around 73% and I got 45%. Our second midterm average was around 60%. I got 55% on that one. And our final exam average was around 50%. And I somehow got 60% on that one. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that if you have a rough start at the beginning of the course, well, the only way from rock bottom is up as demonstrated by my grades. In terms of studying for the exams, redoing the web work assignment seems to be the most effective way of practicing your circuit analysis skills in preparation for an exam, as it was what most of my friends and classmates did before each of the midterms and the final. Unfortunately, our professor didn't really provide us with that many resources for additional practice, especially practice that was on the same difficulty as on the exams. So just keep that in mind when you're studying for the midterms and the final. And the last tip that I have for ELEC 201 is to pre-build your circuits before your lab session so you don't have to waste any time completing the lab itself or punting for a TA to mark your circuits. In each lab section, there are two TAs and with over 30 people in each lab section, you're gonna have to fight to get your circuits checked when also there are people asking for help as well. And if you're efficient enough, it is possible to complete each lab session in one week and not have to come in the following week to finish it off. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 67% in ELEC 201 and the class average was 66%. Considering I failed the first midterm and barely passed the second one, I'm really surprised that I somehow got slightly above average in this course. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before going into ELEC 201. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that the next course that I'll be covering is CompSci 259. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. You'll be using this kit for your labs to build your some web results. I can show them if you ask again from your iPhone. Oh my god, that was scary. Holy f